Hey everybody, Carl Walkner here, back with another video. Today we're going to chat about how big should your live looping rig be. Stay tuned. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew. So take or leave the innuendo, but we all know it's not about the size of your live looping rig. It's about what's most important to you to get your best possible show across to your audience. I know that makes it sound like that the uh, bigger the looping rig is, the better, but that's not always the case. Um, sometimes there's a lot of features such as price, travel, compact, movability, and setup time that can really impact on that. So let's go through the pros and the cons of it all. So in my opinion, there's three options. There's small, large, or there's a medium deconstructed version of that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what I want to say is there's a lot of people who feel like uh, the only way for them to get better is to add equipment onto it. And, and live looping is definitely, um, it's, a, it's a learned skill, I will say. You have to start small, you have to start with the basics, and, uh, and only at that point the technology can help you progress. And depending on what you need to do with your looping, whether you need to incorporate MIDI sequence, control, samples, or whether you want to keep it really raw and acoustic, uh, it all depends on what kind of performance you want to put out there. So a small rig takes up a smaller footprint on stage. It's quicker and easier to set up and dial in than the PA. Um, and I will say, especially if you're starting looping, it's more important to spend more time with a smaller amount of equipment to really dial in your rhythm, timing, and the ability to overdub um, in the appropriate spots. Something that I see a lot of people do is jump into equipment too early and they get a little overwhelmed or out of their comfort zone and depth and they're unable to actually dial in the sounds that they want to dial in. They jump too fast into their looping ability and then they mess up some of the finer things such as rhythm and timing, which doesn't come across well with the crowd and especially anybody who's a performer listening. So um, there is uh, a couple of uh, cons for a small rig. Obviously it's, it's limited in what you can do, whether that's in instruments or effects that you would like to include that you might not have. Um, but I feel like this is a fantastic option for somebody that's starting looping or somebody that just really wants to um, cut that off and get back to the basics and really make sure you can take your looping and transcend it to another level. Okay, larger setups. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> mine's been growing quite a bit in the last couple of years, especially through COVID. I've been focusing on new equipment that I've actually been looking to get for a while. Um, but I will say, it's pretty much in a good spot that I love it. There are a couple of limitations and frustrations with that. With a big setup, obviously, you get more creativity because you have all of the sounds in front of you, every single one that you want. Um, I will say also with this particular setup, uh, I've upgraded to the uh, Headrush Looper board, which has given me more routing options and more uh, a higher quality of output to the front of house. So when I'm playing on larger stages, especially on bigger PA systems, uh, you can notice that difference. On smaller systems, you you really don't notice the difference between a wave and an MP3. But with larger stages, uh, it does make a difference for me, and it's something I've been looking at for quite a while. Of course, it's a lot more costly, and uh, and especially if you're not sure exactly what you need to upgrade to, you can waste a lot of money going between certain pedals to find out the thing that you actually want. So it takes quite a while to figure out. It's also uh, a little more time consuming to set up on stage, whether it's a quick setup that you're going for at a venue, or whether it's some kind of festival performance, you're not always gifted with a large amount of time to set up this. And, uh, and there's obviously a lot more things that can go wrong. Well, good news, there is a happy medium. As you can see, I've got a bunch of stuff, but uh, I like to do what's called a deconstructed version of my live looping rig. And that's where I equal parts take the small and the large version of what I've got going on. I can deconstruct it depending on the setting, depending on the stage. Let me show you what I'm doing. Deconstructed version. I don't always need everything for every single performance, depending on what it is. If it's a big original show, generally I have the time to set up and uh, get everything plugged in here. But if it's a quick, short performance, I might not need my MPC. I might not need those sample beats. I might not need my vocal effects over here because I've actually got a live front of house engineer who can toggle reverb on and off for me. So I can actually reduce the amount of things that I use down to just these two. And for me, that's the smallest setup that I go, but it's half the size of my large setup. And find things, patch things in a way that I can literally unplug those couple of cables uh, from here, and I don't need that, and I also don't need to use that. I can just use the old school analog version of what I've been doing for years, 
and it actually works out pretty great. Well, there you go, everybody. Fast and loose video today. Hopefully that helps influence some decisions that you're going to make about tech. Uh, please keep me in the loop. Like, subscribe for some more content. I'm going to try and do this more regularly. I'm really focusing on getting some more content out there to you guys. So please, uh, in the comments below, hit me up with anything you'd like me to cover. Uh, even if you just have any general questions of my setup of what you should do. But uh, I'll see you on the line. Peace out. Thanks so much. Your reflection was beautiful. Something was unusual. It's not everything that glitters is made of gold.